Hi, I'm Chad Jenkins. I'm a faculty member and of computer science and robotics at the University of Michigan. And I'm here at the Good Citizens of, of Robotics Workshop uh, to offer my apology to Mr. Robert Williams, the first, uh, first victim of automated, a uh, false positive automated uh, facial recognition in law enforcement. And I think we can do better as a field for AI. Um, in particular, uh, Mr. Mr. Williams, I want to apologize that we in AI did not prevent your false positive arrest. We could have done more. I could have done more. And I'd like to give you some insights into this and offer my sincerest apologies. Um, I've been in robotics and AI for, for over 20 years now. Um, and I gave a talk back in 2018 that says we need diversity in our field. I think that's partially why and how we could be good citizens. And I think that would, that would have led uh, to better outcomes in your situation. Um, I know that what has happened in, in the world since Memorial Day, uh, May, May 25th uh, of this year, uh, has caused a lot of people to rethink uh, what's going on in the world, um, to see the brutality that's been applied to George Floyd, but also others around the world, around our nation, uh, have given people a reason to think and, and ask, are we doing the right things in society? Maybe we need to do something different systemically. And this has caused people in my field to actually ask, how can we do better through computing? And so we've gotten, a, my email has been blowing up, my inbox has been blowing up, but a couple of my colleagues and I got together and wrote the Black in Computing uh, uh, letter from, our, from our, our community and our allies for equity and fairness it, that says things that we could do in, in computing that could be better um, to create, create better outcomes for, for, um, for, for Black people in, in computing and through computing. Um, but these things are abstract. I think they really didn't come clear for, for a lot of people until what happened on January 9th of this year, my birthday, my 46th birthday, um, January 9th, 2020. Um, and that is when I, that's when, and we didn't learn till later what had happened to you on, on that day. And, and I think that is powerful and it neat and it should, should get us to, to think a lot about how we can do better. I just wanna show a video of your story because I think you tell it better than I do. They came to the door, uh, I answered it, and they kind of stuck their foot in the door and said, send Robert out. And I said, he's not here. They said, we just saw him come out of that van. And I said, that was my mom, he's not here. Pull in the driveway here, hop out. By the time I close the door, the car is in the driveway blocking me in. As soon as he shut the door, they were right on him, and they were already starting to cuff him by the time we get out there. I was, I was completely shocked and stunned to be arrested in front of my daughter, in front of my wife, in front of my neighbors. I can't really put it into words. It was, it was one of the most shocking things that ever had happened to me. So when we get to the interview room, a detective turns over a picture of a guy and he's like, so that's not you? I look. I said, no, that's not me. He turns another paper over and says, I guess this not you either. I pick that paper up and hold it next to my face. This is not me. I'm like, I hope y'all don't think all black people look alike. And then he says, the computer says it's you. Hey, Julian. Julian, you know why daddy got arrested? Because I looked at up the other computer. I think that video says a lot. And I think we could have done better. I don't think that looks like you at all. Um, I think we are automated systems that we, we laud and we think are great and amazing and produce 99% accuracy. Uh, when they get it wrong, and you're in that 1% that gets it wrong, we owe uh, an apology to you for that. I apologize that you had to spend 30 hours in detention in order for this to get sorted out and go back to your family. I apologize that you have to explain the errors that we made to your kids and your wife and your neighbors. I apologize that you even have to explain the issues to us, the public, but also to us as AI researchers. We know, we've known this all along that this, is, that this is a problem. We've just never had a human face to put to it. Anybody who's black in AI can tell you 
that this that these systems have problems and we've known it for a long time we've known it ever since i was a young graduate student and we knew that it, that facial recognition had problems with people with glasses or hats or dark skin we know that if it can happen to you it can happen to anybody for instance consider this low resolution result like that like the footage they had of um of of that uh, that suspect um, but in, imagine that suspect is somebody who looked like this, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama. Um, they even can mix him up. If it can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. But I think we understand that these are issues. These are technical issues. Those are, that's part of what we do in science. I worry that what we do is we don't understand these things well enough or not willing to consider the, these issues. For instance, if you consider Turing Award winner Jan LeCun, um, he basically says, well, that's the way the system was trained. That's the data that we had on the system. And this is the result. And that's to be expected. But I think the thing that he doesn't realize is that it's not necessarily what's happening in the computing system. It's everything around it. Were there Africans involved in the training of these systems and building of the systems? Are there, were there descendants of slavery and segregation that were involved? Because the real issue with this is that who is in the room when these decisions are being made? Does it look like Mad Men or the social network or Silicon Valley? I worry too much that it does. And, we, and that gets to the systemic problems that we have in computing. And those systemic problems also apply to robotics research. So if you look at the tableau that's, that's well published from, uh, that's the very nice from Georgia Tech, it basically plots uh, for ICRA, for one of our big robotic conferences, in ICRA 2019, uh, which is ICRA 2019, the number of papers that are published by the number of authors and clear in a way deep learning systems, the same deep learning systems that led to your false positive arrest have, um, are, are taking over our field and changing it in ways that we're not really, I don't think we're really ready for. So with this, I apologize that my field of AI did not represent your voice when it was considering the development of these te technologies. But I'd also like to offer some explanation about how we have failed you systemically. And so to get a picture of it, I just wanted to lay out what this looks like. That in the early days, if you take sort of uh, the early, some of the early systems like the Viola Jones system from, from the early 2000s, that research really had few or, and or marginalized black AI researchers involved to give people some thoughts about these types of systems. Those, that research developed and then, it, and then it turned into systems that were actually ready to, to be uh, put into practice. Um, and on the teams uh, that, are, that, that represent those systems or develop those systems, there's not many black people that are involved in that because we produce so few black people and a lot of them get weeded out of our undergraduate curriculum. And then once those systems go in to, to use, uh, the end users of the system, such as law enforcement, are uneducated about the use of the technology and use it unwisely or unethically. But then also there's been no, nobody to represent your perspective or your voice all throughout this system. And this is something that is being studied uh, all over the place. So most of our attention in terms of algorithmic fairness uh, is being addressed as the front end of this. How do we use this technology? What the outputs look like? And so there's great work out there that's, that's looking at this. Um, but from my perspective, where we really failed you was on the back end. We have just not produced enough people to really represent what, what this could have done and how this could have been prevented in your case. And I just wanna make clear that this is a place where I don't necessarily blame Viola and Jones uh, who, who have had a start, who, who started this. Because if you look back in their old paper, figure eight of their, their paper, there was diversity in there. And they, I, and you know, and you can get the sense that they, they're saying, we should do this better because, um, we should, we should have create better data sets that are representative of society. And that just hasn't taken place because we have a larger systemic problem that's at root. It's all about how we practice and incentivize uh, the development of artificial intelligence. And the reality is that we've just failed to include black people in the advances of artificial intelligence. And one of the examples of this goes back to Nils Nilsson, who, is, who, who uh, unfortunately passed away last year, but is he wrote a fabulous book called The Quest for Artificial Intelligence that talked about how our federal dollars, uh, the investments of the, of the American government led to the artificial intelligence we have today. It is a great read, it's fabulous. And he goes around and name drops all the people that have been, been involved and helped, uh, and helped to let, this art, let artificial intelligence grow. 
But the, the problem is, is that there were zero black researchers cited. Uh, in the hit, basically what he's saying is in the history of AI, black people just haven't been a part of it or involved or let, are allowed to, to help in the advancements. Uh, this isn't just a, an issue of the past, this is an issue of, of today. Uh, so, um, so, uh, um, so Intel and, and some of their partners released uh, um, uh, decoding diversity. So I talked about this March in my RSS 2018 talk that shows uh, um, participation of minority groups, of various groups in our, in our tech workforce. And you can see that what we have in this case uh, is very low participation. I, I think these numbers are 7% African-American part African-American participation in tech, 18, 8% uh, Latino. I think those numbers are actually high. Um, I think the numbers are actually not, not, not as good. Um, and so, you know, this is what's called in civil rights term disparate impact. And that disparate impact actually has a big, ha actually has a big effect because it means that the lack of diversity on our development teams leads to, uh, leads to, uh, to racist software that, that, has a, that will have a real impact on society. Um, and so with all of this said, uh, Mr. Williams, I, I think we can do better. So, so this doesn't happen to people like you or me in the future. And so I'm, I want to encourage my field to be better citizens through robotics and AI. And that means what I, what I really want to ask them to do is understand what drives our system. And to, to understand what really drives us, you should just understand the basic motivation, the, the basic sort of game plan. I'm going to be a little cynical with this, but uh, but I think it, 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 you know, some of it's, it's kind of true. There's some truth and humor sometimes. And that what we do is we create a, a bubble of competent looking people that exude success, that show that we are competent. From that, we go out and we get money. We get, our, we, we get money to, to do work, we produce work, and then we, we disseminate in the world. We form a, but that's not good enough. We need people to appreciate it. So we build alliances of like-minded people that agree with us. And then we, we have a certain amount of collusion to promote the views of our alliance always sort of, you know, and the unfortunate part is we often dismiss uh, other dissenting views, but with civility, usually it's sort of, I would say, passive aggressiveness through the, through the, uh, through the review, through our peer review processes. Um, we use this, the patronage that we build up to place our people further into, into our field, uh, academia and industry, and then we use this patronage to get more funding and people, and then we repeat that over and over and over. And this is not just a problem with research of, with us on the back end, it also happens on the front end as well. Because this is what, this is what a lot of people are saying. Uh, when they say, when they call for, for, when they're calling to defund the police, I don't think that's what they mean. I don't want to defund the police, but I know that we have to fund them differently in order to get a different result. Um, we need to consider all sorts of different options because right now this model basically says, we're going to get a bubble of people that think the same way. They're going to form, they're going to collude, to, to, to promote their alliance, they're gonna continue to reinforce that over and over and over, unless we rethink about how we're incentivizing this, this uh, the, how we're incentivizing this system. And so this gets to what I talked about in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in 2018 and about what people can do. And so these were suggestions that I, that I offered. Um, basically what it comes down to is eliminate double standards in our field. Treat people the way you want to be treated and make sure they're included the way that you would want to be included. If we can eliminate those double standards, we can eliminate the disparate impacts that are causing the, the systemic problems in our field. But the, the issue also is that I did not talk about everything. There were some things that I missed. Um, when we're talking about funding, one of the big things is how diverse is my funding review meeting? Um, have we really ever invested in black, uh, in black people that are advancing AI? How much money, how much taxpayer money is going to, to support people? Uh, and also private money. How much is, is industry actually supporting uh, the black people that can help, that can help change, the, change our system? I would also say that we should make sure that we do research with empathy. Our work has real consequences and we should think about the people that we would impact. And um, and, I, and that is why I feel so heartfelt that I owe Mr. Williams, I owe you an apology. And I hope you accept my apology. And I hope we, you can help us do better in our field. And it's something that we all can do is we can get out and vote and we can make sure that our voices are being heard so we have the society that we want. Thank you very much.